How's it going everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm currently just showing my son how relays operate and simple tests that you can do to um, prove that the relay is faulty. This one behind me here is one that came out of a vehicle recently. It was for the fans and it was making them run consistently. It wasn't coming on and coming off like it should. So that relay had failed. And this is a working relay that I'm doing the test on. Anytime I get broken parts like this, I do like to um, bring them home and show simple tests to my son so he can get some understanding of how these things work. Now, for this simple test, it is a really quick and easy way to do it without any massive special tools needed. You have your multimeter, which everyone has. You're going to have a 12 volt uh, power supply, which is going to be in the vehicle anyways, if you need it. And then I just have wiring set up. So the way it gets set up is 85 and 86 is your power feed on your relay. 85 and 86 goes to the battery and then 30 and 87 goes to the continuity side on the multimeter. So you have it set up to continuity or ohms for the resistance and you're looking for a change in the reading and a clicking sound. So when the power gets applied here, gets sent down, you get a click on the relay and then you need continuity. You need both of those to happen. So Junior, go ahead there, hold it down, off, Hold it down, off, and that is how you check to see if the relay is working. Both of those things need to be functional. I did show this in one of my videos many years ago when I was diagnosing a relay on a Peugeot van, but I thought I, I would show you this really quick, simple way to diagnose it if you need it. I want to run through quickly what the relay actually does, how it acts, and identifying the pin and the pen layout which ones you need to test because that is fundamentally what is most important when you're testing the relay you want to be testing the right pins that you're using now all pin layouts are not equal and all relays are not the same so you can have a diagram on some ones you may not have a diagram on others like this one here Pin position as well uh, can be different from one to another. So if I zoom in on this, you can see that 87 is up the top side. Number 30 is on the lower side. We have 85 and 86 is across from one another. And this is the secondary 87 one here. Whereas if you look on this one, even though I, they look identical in pin layout, the numbering is different so instead of number 30 down here we have 86 and 30 switches over to this side 85 is here and 87 is here so just to be cautious of that you want to know where the pins are and you want to correctly identify them so just to quickly run through the functionality without going into heavy detail because i am trying to make a quick video out of this 85 and 86 is the control side so in the test that is the one where you're uh, connecting up you're connecting up 85 and 86 to the battery 30 and 87 is the output side of the relay let's say when this is in the vehicle, number 30 usually is a constant voltage to whatever the relay is supplying, be it lights or a starter motor, whatever. Uh, this then joins up with 87, which completes the output side of the relay when the uh, power has been applied. A bypassing of the relay, which I showed in a test previously, um, the likes of that starter motor bypass that I showed is when this is removed from the vehicle you jump the pin 30 and 87 and that because it hasn't already got a power supply to it there you're able to just bypass the relay and start the vehicle in um, in them cases now when we open up the relay this is the faulty one this is the functional one. So 8586, remember, um, it goes through this coil, creates an electromagnet that then closes the contact. That's usually how these work. So 
you get a power in, closes the contact, and that comes on and off as requested. So this is with the cap removed here, and you can see the contacts are held back in the off position now. And then when we apply power, which we're gonna do in a second. You ready, little man? Okay, go for it. Hold it on. Down, off, down. Yeah, hold it down, and then off. Good boy, and one more time. Down and up. Well done. And that is how you test it. This one, for anyone that's interested, failed because it was constantly closed. So this item here, constantly stuck on, which was creating the cooling fans as soon as the key was turned on to remain on the whole time. This was not switching off at any stage. Once we had the relay changed, we were able to rectify that problem. And that is generally the functionality of the relay, how that failed and uh, how they work. And it really is as simple as that. So simple my four-year-old son was able to complete these tests with me. Remember, you need to have both sides working. So you need to have the clicking and you need to have that continuity side, whether it's on the ohms test or just hearing that audible sound, you need both to confirm you have a working relay. And that is it guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found it informative and useful. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.